This chapter covers the following topics. Planning an automation project. Following standards and guidelines. Choosing a programming language. And documenting programs. Completion of this chapter will help you learn important PLC terms and develop an understanding of PLC programming concepts. It's tempting to start programming a new application immediately in an effort to save time. But before you begin programming, you must do some detailed planning. Otherwise, you're likely to make some costly and time-consuming errors. The typical planning steps summarized in this lesson are as follows. Divide the process into tasks. Describe each task area. Define the safety requirements. Describe the operator displays and controls. Create the configuration diagrams. These steps are described using the example of a simple PLC controlled batch process application that combines and mixes two ingredients in a mixing tank. Any automation process can be analyzed and broken into related tasks. This is necessary to understand the interaction and timing of the process events. For example, our simple batch control process is composed of the following four task areas. Components that add ingredient A. Components that add ingredient B. The agitator and mixing tank. The drain pipe and valve. Also note the similarity of the components that add ingredients A and B. Understanding this can simplify the design of the program that controls this process. Describing each task area can be done in various ways. One approach is to flowchart each task and then assemble the various flowcharts into a unified flowchart for the process. The flowchart for even the simple batch process just described is too involved to discuss in detail, so here are some examples of parts of the flowchart. Part of the flowchart describes what happens when the operator pushes a button to start the tank fill. This part of the chart identifies the conditions necessary to cause the inlet and feed valves to close and the feed pumps to turn on. It also shows what happens when some of those conditions are not met. There may be additional conditions beyond those shown in the accompanying graphic because this is only a simplified example to show the concept. Another part of the flowchart describes what happens when the tank has been filled. As the accompanying graphic shows, when the tank full limit switch closes, the feed pumps are turned off and the inlet and feed valves are closed. Keep in mind that there may be other conditions that cause this to occur as well. For example, there may be a manual push button that an operator can press to shut off the flow to the tank, and this would also be part of the flowchart. In addition, an operator panel or an HMI screen may display the condition of the feed pumps, inlet and feed valves, and fluid level in the tank. There may be many more parts of the process that must be diagrammed, but once all the parts of the process have been fully described, the resulting flowchart will be an essential guide for the programmer. Another important part of describing each task area is describing the control devices, how they are controlled, and what PLC inputs and outputs are required. For example, this simple batch control application uses five motor-operated valves and two feed pumps to control the flow of fluid into and out of the tank. There are a variety of devices that might be controlled, so let's consider one valve and the possible PLC inputs and outputs associated with it. In this example, the ingredient A inlet valve is controlled by two contactors, one that closes the valve and one that opens the valve. 
Each contactor requires a 120 volts AC signal from a PLC digital output. In addition, there are two 120 volts AC digital inputs to the PLC from this valve. One from a limit switch that signals that the valve is open, and one from a limit switch that signals that the valve is closed. Thus far, we have described only one control valve and the associated devices. Each of the control valves and pumps must be described along with the flow sensors, level switches, and agitator motor starter. In addition, devices not shown in this diagram, such as safety devices and operator controls, must be described. Once the process flow and devices have been described, it is also useful to create diagrams that relate the various signals. For example, the accompanying graphic shows signals related to the control of inlet valve A. This type of diagram is useful in planning the blocks of code needed in the PLC program. While preparing these diagrams, it is useful to make notes regarding the functionality of the required code blocks. These diagrams and notes will also point out which code blocks can use the same logic. For example, although the inputs and outputs associated with inlet valves A and B are different, the functionality is the same. So a reusable block of code can be used with different inputs and outputs during each instance of the block use. Although describing the safety requirements is listed as a separate step, it is often done at the same time as describing other equipment requirements. Safety requirements must consider the following categories of safety. Functional safety, which involves ensuring that all parts of the machine or system function in a safe manner and will not cause injury or damage when a failure occurs. Electrical safety, which involves mitigating the risk associated with electrical circuits and devices. Fire safety, which involves limiting the risk of fire associated with a system or process. Environmental safety, which involves limiting the risk to the environment associated with a system or process. All these categories of safety must be considered in the design of a machine system or process. The safety requirements needed depend on a variety of factors such as safety laws and standards, company policies, energy levels employed, materials processed, equipment used, and how humans interact with the equipment and process during operation and maintenance. Based on these factors, a risk assessment may be required. This risk assessment identifies and evaluates all hazards associated with a machine or process and helps to determine the steps required to reduce risk to an acceptable level. The design of a safety system can incorporate localized safety devices and systems which are independent from the PLC. For example, the accompanying graphic shows an emergency stop, e-stop, push button wired to a safety relay. When the e-stop push button is pressed, the safety relay de-energizes the contactor that provides power to the motor and the contactor signals the safety relay when its contacts have opened. While localized safety applications are common for individual machines or factories with limited automation, many factories require safety systems that integrate with automation solutions. As represented in the accompanying graphic, Siemens Safety Integrated for Factory Automation Solutions include automation systems, drive technology, operator control and monitoring systems, safe industrial controls, and the software to simplify component and system engineering. Safety integrated products and systems permit the seamless integration of safety technology with standard automation. This integration of standard and safety technology offers considerable benefits for enhanced competitiveness for both equipment manufacturers and the end users of their equipment. Machine manufacturers benefit from reduced hardware and significantly simplified engineering that speeds the design of machines and systems. End users benefit from the increased safety and productivity provided by the use of safe machines and systems. 
describing the operator displays and controls is listed here as a separate step. It is typically done at the same time as describing other equipment requirements. Some operator displays and controls may be associated with a panel on a machine or near some part of a process. These panels are typically wired to PLC inputs and outputs, and in some cases to safety devices as well. Increasingly, however, operator and maintenance displays and controls are associated with one or more human-machine interfaces, HMIs. HMIs range in complexity from small panels with a few illuminated buttons to devices that can display and control an entire process. HMIs are typically connected to the PLC via a network such as Profinet, or in the case of some mobile panels, an industrial wireless local area network, IWLAN. Because the design of HMI screens and networking must be closely integrated with the design of the PLC system, Siemens TIA Portal Software, discussed later in this e-learning, provides an integrated platform for HMI design and PLC programming, along with other development, operation, and maintenance functions. Once the system requirements have been described in detail, the control system must be specified. This means that the PLC CPU type, signal modules, communication modules, HMI devices, and related components must be identified and described. Based on this information and other design details, configuration diagrams must be developed that show the system layout and details. One type of configuration diagram shows the network connections for the various control components. For the simple batch process previously described, the number of control components is small, so a diagram like the one shown on the accompanying graphic may be sufficient. However, more detailed network configuration information should accompany this diagram. Additional diagrams are needed to show the PLC CPU models and other control components and the modules for each component. For PLC input and output signal modules, the I.O. addresses and their relation to the various I.O. devices must be included. These diagrams combine with the graphic configuration interfaces and drag and drop capabilities of TIA Portal software simplify system configuration.